Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance, and we are standing in an unbelievably beautiful spot in the world. We're standing in the Rio Grande River. We're about 10 miles north of South Fork, Colorado. We're at Collar State Wildlife Area, one of the properties managed by Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Uh, absolutely beautiful place to fish. If you look around, it's unbelievable. So we're just getting started. It's first thing in the morning. We're gonna do some fly fishing. We might do some spin fishing as well. We've got St. Croix's fantastic new soul fly rod. We're standing in an unbelievably beautiful stretch of river. I'm gonna start off with a hopper dropper. So I've got a, a big attractor fly on the top right here and just a little hair's ear right here because we really don't know anything about the bug life. And truthfully, it's barely light enough to even see what's going on out here. So gonna be fun guys. Stay tuned, get comfortable. We're gonna show you some beautiful Rio Grande and trout. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Damp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. <laughs> right off the bat, guys, it's barely even all the way light out. And uh, we are just getting rolling. I mean, we had, we just did an open a minute ago. Oh, buddy. <laughs> and we got a big old band in St. Croix's brand new soul fly rod. How cool is that, guys? We've been standing in the Rio Grande River for about a minute and a half. And uh, I just picked a little hare's ear put it underneath a real bright attractor so I can see it in the morning light. And just like that, we got a beautiful brownie on the brand new Soul. There it is, guys. The brand new Soul fly rod just won. Best fly rod in the freshwater industry at iCast. Fantastic. And I made about 10 casts with it this morning, if that. And we already got this guy. And I believe he's already unhooked. Yeah, he is already unhooked in the net. So how about that, how about that, how about that first thing in the morning, see you buddy. Rio Grande River, it's cold, it's like in the mid 30s, even though it's August out, the whole place to ourselves, absolutely beautiful. And I just flat missed one like a straight chump. Come on now, Chad, come on. Let's see if he'll come back. And all the fly false casting you guys see that I'm doing, I'm doing that on purpose. The reason I'm doing that is to dry that fly out some each time. It is a natural material fly, it has no foam or anything on it. It's actually a fly that I personally tied myself in probably 1986 or so. And I'm not exaggerating. It's an extremely old Royal Trude. And the reason I put it on is it's big and bushy and white big white calf's hair or calf's tail uh, wing on it so I can see it and the fish can see it. It's interesting because here at Collar you can see straight across the river from me right there that's an actual put-in point a rafting put-in point right there and we noticed when we scouted yesterday we drove up and down the river yesterday and we noticed when we scouted there was several access points there's probably half dozen access points if it, if it wants to get windy and make fly fishing difficult, we'll grab an ultralight St. Croix Trout Series rod and four pound test and get after them. I see no point in fighting it. If the fly rod is the appropriate tool for the job, I love to fly fish. And anytime I get an opportunity to cast the sole fly rod that I'm throwing right here, it's a good day. Got him. There we go. <laughs> All right, now it feels like it might be a decent one right here, guys. I'm telling you what, first thing in the morning, it is freezing cold. I am not lying about how cold it is standing here, and it's August. It's, uh, haven't seen any sun yet. Easy fish. I'm not in a hurry. We got a 5X tippet, guys, so we're not in any giant hurry with them. It's another beautiful fish. And this is why you come to the Rio Grande River right here. Nobody here. 
and uh, we'll see here. Come on, buddy. Come on over here. Come on over here, buddy. Come on over here. Oh, maybe not just yet. Oh, here he comes. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Right. There we go. <laughs> and there you go. Another beautiful Rio Grande Brown on the sole fly rod, guys. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> oh man, I've got the hopper dropper here. I'll show you, I'll show you what I got going on here. So I've got right here a big attractor fly on a 5X tippet and then tied off of it, there's a little nymph right back there on the back. And that dropper fly, so, or the hopper is the only thing that's been bit so far, the attractor. I'm doing a lot of false casting to dry that off. It's a natural fly, it doesn't have any foam on it. And uh, throwing it on St. Croix sole, it's a nine foot five weight. Um, fantastic, off to a great morning. First time I've ever fished with this rod. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Now, I hope honesty counts because I set my fly rods lean down right there. And like I told you, we always travel with a spinning rod. Well, I got really cold. My hands got really cold. They started getting windy and my hands got really cold. And I'm gonna show you something right here. It's kind of funny. I got a little uh, Johnson minnow spin out. And this is a tiny little trout. It ate my tiny little minnow spin. Oh, there. Oop, there you go, buddy. But uh, ironically, we came and scouted last night for just a couple of minutes. We got into town time to come up here and fish for a couple of minutes. We caught a half dozen trout. We caught them on the little minnow spin. There's a little Johnson inline minnow spin. They were all the size of that one right there. We didn't catch any bigger than that. This morning we started with the fly rod right away and we've only caught a couple of fish with it, uh, but they were much, much bigger. That road you see with all that traffic on it, those are probably a lot of big game hunters getting set up. Uh, here, here at uh, College State Wildlife Area, we are surrounded by some absolutely world-class elk hunting, deer hunting, bear hunting, uh, big time outdoor town right here. A couple different rivers. All right guys, we just fished all this water with the fly. We got three of them to rise. And I decided real quick that I was gonna get a kink out of my line on the spinning rod that I noticed when we got ready to walk away. I picked it up and threw it again and aye, yay, aye, there goes, he goes. That's right, you got an idea. But uh, it's a little Johnson minnow spin in rainbow trout color. There's not very many rain, or no, actually I got the little gold one on here. I forgot about that. I swapped it to the little gold one a little bit ago. But uh, it's a sixteenth of an ounce. I've got it on four pound nanofill. And so a real light little rod and, and combo. But I just fished all of this with the fly. I had two fish that rose, neither of which that I stuck. Went through a couple different flies and, uh, and then decided to throw this in a couple times. And just like that, we got bit again. So we're going to keep playing with that back and forth. I'm carrying a jig, I'm carrying a spinner, and I'm carrying a fly rod. And we're going to mix all three of those every place we stop and fish. We might try a little surface hopper as well uh, on, the, on the spinning rod and, and see how that goes as well. But that's how we love to travel and fish is mix it up. And I think it's how you catch the most fish. And if you're going to visit a place like College State Wildlife Area where we are, there's a lot of water to fish in a huge river. You'd never be able to fish all of it on a fly rod unless you had all day, you know, for maybe days on end. It's an exceptionally expansive stretch of river, which is great. Uh, but with the spinning rod, I can reach the other side of it. I can fish all of it I want. And we're kind of waiting. We got a drift boat coming. We're kind of letting these guys come through as well. So we have moved up river here on College State Wildlife Area just a little bit. We found a bridge that goes over, and I'm a big fan of fishing bridges. It also pinches the river down a bunch right here, so we've got a whole bunch more current flow, gives overhanging cover, and there's typically a structural change as well. I got the spinning rod out for, specifically for this spot. It's very deep, it's running hard, tough to present a fly underneath here intelligently. So I've got a little tiny jig out. It's a state wildlife area. It is flies and artificial lures only, so it's an unscented two and a half inch long little minnow on a 16th ounce jig head. 
So we're going to see about getting this thing bit real quick. This is heavy water and also it's apparently raining upstream already because there is a significant amount of stain in the water now that was not here this morning. So we're going to see about this, but traveling with both spinning tackle and fly tackle is a really good way to be able to address all the conditions you might come across. And this is a prime spot I would think to get bit with a jig. So we're going to give it a whirl. Fish right there. That's why you give it a whirl with the jig in the heavy water. Oh, buddy. Brown trout love bridges, guys. I've said that forever. They're, they're like little trolls, kind of like largemouth bass in some ways. Like he's got me in this current right here. And he's not giant, but he's got me sideways. So we're going to be careful with him. Come on up here, buddy. Nope, 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 not that way. And you can see that trout series rod. It's got lots of backbone right in the middle. There we go. Beautiful fish, guys. Absolutely gorgeous brown trout. And, you know, we talk about fishing under bridges a lot. We've done it on a whole bunch of different shows. But that's a beautiful brownie on a little unscented jig here. We'll get him unhooked real quick. There's the barbless jig. And, guys, that's a pretty nice color. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Syncoid Trout Series Rod, we've, we've put these on a bunch of different shows. They're specifically made for fishing trout. There's a real soft tip for throwing all these light little baits, but there's more backbone right in here. You also saw how forgiving it was, the tip of that rod absorbing all this current right here while I was dealing with that fish. Four pound test, trialing sensation, and then the size 10 Aura Reel, drag set real soft. It's a monofilament line, so it's real versatile. I can do a lot of things with it, and it's a seven foot light powered rod. It's still extra fast. Uh, I love the extra fast action in these for the accuracy, so it's a great setup. Took me exactly three casts, I think, to catch that one. I hadn't even tried this side yet. When it comes to catching trout, you know, I've said forever, the jig is the most versatile tool, I think, realistically, almost any fish. I don't even think you have to, to specify trout. Uh, because you can do it at any depth range, it moves however much action I do or don't put on it. I can change profiles and colors and weights and all that but the bottom line is the jig's a great tool and there's another one. Oh, Ooh, almost had him <laughs> he was close right here in front of us too okay we'll try again here there's so much water coming underneath here and so much color in the water that you can make a lot of presentations and it'd be hard pressed to get any even a decent drift with the fly rod under here about all the way over there. You'd never be able to do that on a fly rod. We'll let it swing all the way. There he is right there. Oh, no, that was not a fish. That was the bottom. There's, that's a fish though. He's right in the middle. Oh, look at him go. He's big old jumping brown. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah, there you go, guys. Collar State Wildlife Area here on the Rio Grande River. South Fork, Colorado is one of the coolest towns ever. The hunting around here is really cool. I mean, fantastic. And I can come to the river and do this. And that's uh, another beautiful brownie. Come on up right there, baby. There we go. Look at them, one after the other, eating up that little jig. Okay, and one good thing about these nets, too, these frable nets, you can see, Fish can swim in there. He's got plenty of room to go wherever he needs. We're gonna let him out of there. Hey, buddy. There's tons of water here to fish, so we're kind of cherry picking stuff that fits what I feel like gives us the highest percentage chance of locating fish quickly. Got him, got him. All right, and that one got the nymph. That's why you do the hopper dropper, guys. So it's actually, in my case, a big giant stonefly dropper, but either way, see if we can get down here in the water where we can get to him. And I, what I did is I put a prince nymph underneath the stonefly 
and we got one. <laughs> all right, there we go. Back and forth from the fly rod to the spinning rod all morning long, and it's been fun, guys. That's a fun way to go about your fishing. You got a little prince snip, easy buddy. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> well, you saw him. You got a good look at him. But uh, back and forth from the, from the jig to the uh, dry fly to now the fish on the nymph all morning long. We've been just going like that. And I'm sure we could keep doing it. And just in my mind, guys, it's probably one of the most fun ways to go about your fishing on the rivers. When the fly's the right tool, throw it. When it's not, throw a jig and keep catching them. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. What you see right there is this husk of a stonefly that we found on a rock. And uh, there's tons of those, and that's actually a small one. Most of them we've been seeing are bigger than that one. But that's the, the fly that I have on the top of my rig right here is mimicked to be a giant stonefly type fly. And it's made with foam underneath, so it floats really well. Then I've got a 5X tippet with a dropper down to a little print sniff right here with a bead head on it. And that print sniff is heavy, so that's why I want the fly that's got some foam in it to help hold the whole rig up. So in the case of some of the fish, we've caught them on the dry fly. Some of them have bit the print snip, and, it, and the dry fly then acts as your indicator so you know what's happening. You know, I always trail some sort of a, a bright colored nymph when I have stained water like this. Um, and th that's why I've got the print sniff on there. The little white barbs on that thing really make it stand out. And that's why I have it on here. I'll sometimes troll, uh, or, or troll, I'll sometimes Oh, that's two in a row that got me right there. They're right on that corner. I got to pay attention here. Uh, might be a little tiny guy. That's why I always tell myself when I'm getting clobbered by fish. Uh, but generally speaking, my nymph's something general. I don't, I don't throw a real specific nymph in most cases. Usually when I'm hopper dropper fishing, it has more to do with the fact that I, I'm just trying to take advantage of two areas of the water column. Got him. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, come here, fish. <laughs> oh, hey. I shouldn't have turned around and licked at y'all. Oh, that was a beautiful dark colored brownie. I hopefully you got that. That was a beautiful dark colored fish. And you can see the way that sole fly rod, I just barely wag it nice and slow, and I can get him like that. Oh, buddy, that's a little tiny one. <laughs> Five, easy fish. Five weight might be a bit much for this little brownie. Okay, here we go. This one's gonna bit. Got him. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's just it's such a sweet spot right there. Oh buddy, that's why you go over there and do that. <laughs> oh, you just own that big attractor fly. Just absolutely owned it. Come here, buddy, come here, buddy. Easy, buddy, right there. Oh, <laughs> that's almost heartbreaking, guys. When they get like that, they just, I mean, they, they just come and you, you know that fish came from a ways to get it. You can see how he hit it. And he's all wrapped up here. Let me get him out of the line. He's hooked in my dropper. Oh, there he goes. Got him. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Well, that might have been a bunch. You know, we've talked about the power in this sole fly rod right here, but uh, we've been catching lots and lots and lots of fish. We haven't showed you many of these little guys, but oh, here, here's a beautiful little par marked up brown right there. Look at that. And that's what's pulling this little prince nymph under a whole bunch of times when I'm not getting them hooked. And that's okay. I understand that. But I can't say enough about the sole fly rod. I've been throwing a two fly rig straight into the wind all morning on this thing. It casts like a one piece rod. It begs you to punch it and throw it and generate line speed with it. Um, absolute blast. Got the ART technology in it, which is a reinforcing technology that St. Croix puts into their high end rods. 
uh, keep you from breaking the rod. Comes with two tips, so if you do something stupid like slamming your car door, you have an extra one with you, and the tips are only two and a half feet long. So that's a fantastic thing as well. And then the IPC technology, and then being no ferrule in the middle of the blank, the IPC means it's got an integrated poly curve or an even curve from one end to the other, as opposed to taper points in the rod, makes it cast fantastic. Oh, dude, that should get owned, shouldn't it? I'd love to see another one grab the big fly on top, but I don't really care what they grab as long as they grab it hard enough to get on it. Boom, like that. Oh, and I got a dick. <laughs> oh, buddy, are you kidding me? Come here, fish. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and net you. We're gonna go ahead and put you in the net. How nice, guys, how nice is that? And you saw him come up and smash that fly. And uh, I mean, it, it, we just showed you the husk. I can, if I look around, I can probably find one right here on a rock in front of me. But those stone flies are like this long. And so my big attractor fly at the top is uh, to mimic those. And that guy just owned it right here in front of me. That's how it's supposed to go, guys. But I'll tell you what, don't know we're gonna have any more fun than that. We've had a great time. Collar State Wildlife Area here, just north of South Fork, Colorado. Fantastic place to fish, tons of water, um, pocket water, slick water, rafters, kayakers, and great fly fishing and spin fishing. Come check it out, come elk hunting down here as well. Fantastic area of Colorado for elk hunting, so keep that in mind. We appreciate you guys watching, and hopefully you'll tune in and see what we're up to next time and possibly visit Collar State Wildlife Area yourself. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. There's, that's a fish though, he's right in the middle. Oh, look at him go, he's big old jumping brown. <laughs> oh buddy, right there baby, there we go. Look at him, one after the other, eating up that little jig. Berkeley, catch more fish. One thing's not, there's one, got him, there, oh. Fish, oh my God, dude. Got him, no, that one's on the bottom. Golly, call me O for two for five. Fish, oh my God, dude. Uh, we gotta cut for a sec. You can cut for a minute now. Okay, cut, all right, cut. No, huh, all right, you can cut if you want. You can cut.